Hello everyone, it's Mike Levin, Monday, July 11th, 2016. And when last we left it off, I was giving a little tutorial here on dict objects in Python. So uh, I had created one called a dict, which contained in it name value pairs, one colon A, two colon B, in order to give numerical indexes to columns in Google Spreadsheets and other spreadsheets for that matter, which after the Z column start going A, 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 B, A, C, A, D, and so on uh, through to Z, Z and probably beyond. I'll just go up to Z, Z and I had stopped short in the last tutorial because I think it got to a pretty good point. I had demonstrated uh, the zip function, which was a really big part of the point of this tutorial and uh, returning tuples and tuple unpacking. But I think it's important to hit the list comprehension part of this that, that I had neglected. And in preparation for this video, I had actually made uh, this experiment here, which I'm going to just go ahead and delete that because it's kind of a spoiler, but it does the first step here, which is to create a variable called letters, which is bringing in all the uppercase ASCII letters, which when printed out is A through Z, and that's a wonderful starting point. So I always like to restart and run all because it clears everything in memory that might have been hanging around, and it just shows you uh, the same thing over again, but it's a, a clean slate. Now I'll start with for loops. For loops are the things that you essentially get away from when you start doing things in list comprehensions and a more py Pythonic approach. But to give the sort of lay the groundwork for what we're doing and why, and I'm going to do for a letter, sticking with my convention of sticking just an A in front of an uh, instance of something, a uh, member of a collection, a uh, instance of an object, whatever. For, not fur, but for leaving my mistakes intact for your benefit. In letters, and no big mystery here, you can print a letter. Uh, let's see, shift return. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so you got it's not even, you know, you can't really call it a sequence or a list here. This is just printing a letter per line uh, from a sequence. If uh, we wanted to create a sub loop that spun through those letters again, uh, we could go here and go for B letter in letters. Now, if you just printed A letter, you'd get something. Shift enter, getting good habits. Oh, if you put a semicolon, I mean a colon at the end, you'd get something. All the A's, all the B's, oh, well that looks like a, a pretty good first step. Uh, but what you really wanna do is print A letter plus B letter, right? So already off the bat, you see, you know, this is almost what we need, but it's not a list, it's just outputting stuff. So to make this a list, you have to go through this annoying process of, you know, say new list equals initialize it as empty. And here, instead of printing it, you would say new list dot append a letter plus B letter. And I'll put that. And now you can just look at new list. And now finally here you have that list. And it's not really inclusive. Uh, of what you know everything we need so if we needed everything in the index we could go letters plus new lists I believe so a sequence plus a list let's see what that does nope can't convert so you would just turn this into a list and add it to that other list and now you have exactly that you know list that you would need for um, this project of creating numeric indexes for all these spreadsheet columns. So that's one way to do it, but anyone who's been around Python for a while is going to say, well, definitely better, better approaches here. Maybe I should leave that approach. Uh, let's see, edit paste, P 
any cells below. Maybe I should leave that here uh, by way of contrast. I don't want to confuse people with the extra code, but uh, it might be useful to see it there while we create the alternative. So you have letters. We'll start out from that again. Simple sequence. Now, sequences can be treated like lists and list comprehensions. So one of my favorite tricks is to first just put some square brackets around it, execute it. Now you see it's a list with a sequence inside of it. But as soon as you have square brackets around any sequence, you can start using this uh, nomenclature. I like going x for x in. And what's that gonna do? It's just going to give you a list again. But it is now actually in list comprehension uh, syntax. And to get a nested list like this, the temptation, I have to admit, is now going, uh, making that like the first element of a statement. That for y in letters. And then of course you'd have to put that in square brackets. I really don't think this is gonna work, but uh, I wanna show you uh, my first thought at list comprehensions. Hey, look at that. Yeah, it's, it's pretty close, it's pretty close. But there is an issue of, of scope in here that I was uh, sort of struggling with on how to do a Cartesian join or a Cartesian product. So um, that is combining everything with everything else from two lists so that what you're coming out with is list A multiplied by list B. So I'm going to start back from letters, put the square brackets around it, and now here's where the magic uh, really starts to happen. Let's see, shift enter. Okay, instead of uh, x for x, and I'm going to do uh, y for y in, and you get that again, where we were. Now instead of actually nesting with square brackets, y for y in letters for x in letters. And once again, you get that pattern that looks a lot like this before you did that plus that. So y plus a, plus, uh, y plus x. There it is. See that? Isn't that much nicer, that one little list comprehension line doing a Cartesian product? Nicer than this whole set of for loops that need new variable names created outside of them. And so you say, oh, well, what about that first thing? Well, now that you're on this one line, you can just do list um, letters plus. There you have it. So <clears throat> on my first tutorial, I could have gone ahead and, and done this, but I was like, this is not only list comprehension, this is list comprehension on the slightly advanced side. So let me try and hit it home by taking that magic bit of code, going to the project from yesterday, and this is zipping together uh, numbers and letters. So this is where we created our numbers. Numbers was a range of letters. So basically by the time we have our letters here, let's change that to uppercase to stay consistent with what we've done so far. And we're gonna put another line, another entry in here. And we'll create a new, you know, this is a new letters thing. I mean, we can just replace letters, right? Replace the object. And probably this now is just going to snap into place. A dict equals the zipping together of numbers and letters. And printing a dict. Voila, a numeric index exactly as I needed. This makes it sort of ugly to look at. Is that just to look at stuff? Yeah, we can get rid of that. We don't need to see how many numbers there are. This is much prettier. We have 
our dictionary object that has a numeric index all the way, I would presume, to ZZ, 702. And this answers the question, why would you even use a dictionary for this when the function called ordinal will tell you the ordinal position of, say, you know, any of your letters A through Z uh, in the ASCII uh, numeric uh, sequence. And then you could just use an offset to make it uh, you know, a one-based index. And that's a, a highly efficient way to go, but it would leave off at Z and we need to forge on beyond Z. So the magic code in here, I guess, is this, 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 and this. So we learned, you know, importing stuff from the string module, uh, which gives us our A through Z. Uh, we learned to do some fancy list comprehension and appending together uh, lists in order to get up to ZZ. And then we learned how to set our numbers equal to the one based index of the range of how many you know, letters there were. And then we zipped them together. We zipped together our numbers with our letters and ended up with this wonderful object, which is gonna be uh, really useful and so much nicer than typing all this out and hardwiring it and having it subject to, uh, to human error. So that brings my uh, my, my first real tutorial uh, moving to this wonderful Jupyter Notebook platform uh, to completion, uh, finishing the part that I neglected to put in uh, that very first tutorial. And I really hope you enjoyed that and are starting to appreciate this incredible power of Python, this brief, uh, terse, uh, wonderful, understandable expressiveness, which is just pushing ahead the Python platform by uh, leaps and bounds with everyone jumping on the bandwagon because who doesn't want an API that works like this uh, to whatever uh, more advanced tools are, are lurking underneath. Uh, Python is just a, um, you know, a perfectly designed uh, idea expression uh, language engine uh, for creating and shaping uh, objects that you need for for various purposes. So I'm starting to ramble now, but you know, I want to make sure that, you know, this, this simple little elegance that was, you know, done in here, uh, how truly awesome uh, that is, and how it's very, you know, um, exemplary of the um, moves forward that Python makes. Uh, with doing things such as list comprehensions to sort of simplify the whole language across the board to uh, speed up its execution time, to uh, increase its readability, and to just generally make it a pleasure to work in. So thanks for joining me. Hope you enjoyed that and uh, hope to see you again soon. And don't forget to subscribe.